Hey guys, how's it going today? Living the dream. Yeah, I'm doing fine, cutting into my nap time. <laughs> I know, right? It's got to be 5 o'clock somewhere. Well, <laughs> it's 5 o'clock here. This is past our normal recording time. I know. Well, it's been an interesting day for all of us, you know. Um, it's funny because, like, when you do podcasting and you're, you're looking for subject matter to talk to, generally you start looking at the news cycle. Right. Right, you know. But sometimes that can be kind of a... I don't know. It's 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 kind of a humdrum, same old stuff, different day kind of thing. So we we have a thing called the creative well, and the creative well is a place where we start storing ideas and thoughts and things that we might want to do for a podcast one day. So today is that day. It's our version of Mad TV. Yeah, you know, shit just falls out of our head and lands on this page, and right. here it's we a, go. It's a bucket full of fish. We pour them right. out on the poured them out on the ground there right. you go so we threw the bucket in the well and we pulled out a winner here and this one this one's pretty interesting so um there's a, a mayoral con candidate in the city of chicago and she's come out as part of her campaign policy she wants to make sure that when she's elected she wants to remove com the the caveat that if a citizen makes a complaint against the police officer that it's truthful <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it's true officer <laughs> I feel, therefore, it has happened. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, it, it, she's serious. I mean, this is a serious candidate running for the mayor of the city of Chicago. She looks serious. She does, doesn't she? She yeah. kind of has that, like, shifty look there. Yeah. She's probably running from some armed assailant in her district. I mean, <laughs> that place is crazy. But, yeah, she literally, she she cites the fact that in, in an Obama report or a study that people were afraid to make uh, file complaints because they had to sign a thing that says the statements do you swear the statements you've given are factual and truthful and, and they're saying that most of them were dropped because people wouldn't sign them <laughs> well yeah and, they probably couldn't remember what they told them in yeah, the beginning you with. know the thing that's crazy about this is just the whole history of government in chicago right and you make a statement like this right are you kidding me so what we're trying to do this is like this is like nurturing uh you know petting a puppy here is they're they're making sure that 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 all of the controversies controversies that's ever been about chicago stays that way the stigma we're, lives. we're not trying to change anything right. we're just going to keep the, everything the same it's just the, it's just bizarre that people actually can get up there yeah. and expect you to take it serious i mean because you would think if something happens and you give a sworn statement you want it to be factual you would think you know i that's mean that's kind of the whole reason behind the word statement if yeah, you think about yeah it. i'm thinking it's, this person also doesn't have a campaign manager either so. <laughs> some sort of handler <laughs> yeah or with a tranquilizer yeah. gun this is like a this is somebody who is off the leash here i, I think yeah. it's a it's a former uh convict as well Lori lightfoot i mean what a name yeah, that's it. It's yeah. like a street name. It does. It's, <laughs> could be, Graham. You never know. <laughs> yeah, so this isn't being received very well by the Chicago police, by the way. it's uh, it, it's it, Actually, we found this on a page called Blue Life Matters, which I thought was funny. Right. Uh, because it's you, you would just expect that somebody that was in the city of Chicago and knowing the problems they have in the city of Chicago... You would want the truth. Yeah, I was going to say that. That that's a source that may be a, little, a bit skewed Could in their be. view of, <laughs> of what's going on. I there. saw. I saw a, 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 it was a TV show one time, and it's funny. They were trying to sell a house, and this is what it just struck me that it reminded me of. <laughs> They're trying to sell this house, and it's kind of a, a rundown, beat up, blah blah blah. It's got all these problems. And the real estate agent's explaining to the other one, he goes, there's the truth. And he shakes his head back and forth like, no. And then he says, then there's the truth. And he's shaking his head up and down. <laughs> so that's kind of, I think, what we're getting with this mayoral candidate uh, yeah, here. Yeah, just the, just the idea. I mean, you know, so body cameras don't lie. I mean, there's a saying out there, who are you going to believe, what I'm telling you or your lying, lying eyes, eyes and ears? Yeah. And, and so when you start seeing that police departments are now more forthright with releasing body cams because they're disputing yeah. all these fake claims. Yeah. There was one the other day. It was a, a, a black gentleman pulled over. He's a pastor of a church. Or, or, and Is that the one who's the, involved with the... That's the NAACP. Yeah, the NAACP. Yeah, that's the yeah. like NAACP. And clearly, the officer was very professional, and it was the person that was pulled over right. that was having the problem in the attitude. Okay, so, uh, you know, with these okay just with cameras maybe not uh -huh. body cameras but depending on if you get the if you find the per, the right person or right avenue to 
tell a story, as long as there's nothing there to validate or to call into question whatever it is that you're calling, going to claim, then you can say just about anything that you want. The reason why I bring it up is, is uh, that story that we were talking about here that happened locally in, in one of the in one of the Houston suburbs about the uh, school teacher. The school teacher. Yes. The, the lady who who, who who felt inconvenienced about waiting in a line to drop her child off and tried to cut through another school's parking lot. Right. Going the wrong way. Going, going, going the wrong, wrong way. Directions. Ignoring ignoring all and, and endangering all lives. The, Instructions two, from from two, staff, two prior staff, and then yeah. it gets to the point where it it's okay. So it's an escalation procedure. Finally, a um, a teacher comes along and basically coffins her freaking hood. Yep, and then basically is trying to instruct this lady how she's wrong. And this lady is on the on the on her phone recording, recording. this, telling this person that they don't know who they're messing with. Yeah, that was the first thing. That gave you very much an right. insight so, into her mentality. Mistake right. number one, and then somehow or another, new the uh, the local news station here gets wind of it, and the way that they they try to spin the story, she's now the victim. Is the 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 parent dropping the child off, driving and doing everything wrong? Teachers is attacking the, is parents. Is the victim, yeah. and the and the teacher is attacking parents. Yeah. So that is some shit. It is. It, it, it's, it's the world we live in, man. It's unbelievable. And the way they portrayed it, I mean, she had the distraught look on her face yeah. telling this story. Right. And how I look at it is... I'm wondering if she was coached before she actually even did that. It not wouldn't only, surprise me. Not only did the parent get egg on her face, the news organization, if they didn't, they should have. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, that's really who's at fault in all this. Oh, my God. Yeah. Trying to twist that story up and, and, and portray somebody who's a victim who ain't one. It's, it's frustrating to see. So, you know, back in the day, you remember when we used to watch TV shows like Lou Grant? I know we're going way, yeah, yeah. way back. Yeah. Somebody said something about us being old men, about talking about old men stuff. Well, I'm going to talk about yeah, old man thing. That, that person knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live, boy. So, there is this TV show as Lou Grant or any, even Fletch. We'll even pick Fletch. They have stringers. Yeah. So there's people that go around all day, and they're paid to come up with a news story. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to wonder if that's what this lady's doing on the side, because why don't I just get in my car and drive through a schoolyard <laughs> and see how many teachers I can get jump yeah. on the hood of my car right. <laughs> and record it? Because it, it, it's <laughs> she clearly admitted that she was not going to wait. Right. She needed well, to get I was from late. A to B. Her excuse yeah. was her big excuse yeah. was I was late. Well, now whose fault is that to begin with? Right, and then trying to, and then having to go get to the back of the line, she was just unwilling to. to yeah, do they so. were going to turn her around. They yeah. were willing to turn her around, but she couldn't do that because that would make her more late. Right, inconveniencing her while endangering the lives of kids in a parking lot. Just the, the no, the, nobody ever drew that conclusion. The in logic that some people come up with to try to. To just try to save face for him, right? Oh my God, yeah. So we're 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 throwing the bucket back in the well, and I I pulled one up called Safe Space. Ooh. So you know, it's it's funny because this has been this has been going on for a couple of years now. Um, it started out with University of Missouri. Safe Space is just yeah. a, there is is a there's clearly an obstacle in front of me that I can't get to you. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, it's like the old East <laughs> tape. It really doesn't mean anything, right. buddy. <laughs> right? Excuse me. Yeah, it, it's it, it's funny. So this the the most recent one I can recall is where they the college put a closet. Oh, the cry closet. Yeah, the thing? cry closet. Yeah, in there. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, okay, so I would be the guy that sat outside to see what fool went in there. Right. And so you remember those blue porta potties when you were a kid? Yeah. So we had plumbing break one time at, at, at one of our at school we were at. And so we had these porta potties, and it was just—I felt bad for whoever went in there, because guess what? The door got tied shut, and it got tipped, tipped over. <laughs> it got tipped. I want one of those safe spaces <laughs> to have like this little automated thing that stamps your head that says when you come out, <laughs> it says you're you were a fucking crybaby. Thank you, thank you for visiting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there should be a souvenir. Like yes. A, like a t-shirt mm -hmm. yep. or something like that that says, hey, don't bother me. I'm on my way to my cry space. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I, this is funny because this is this is popping up everywhere. So th we started out with safe zones, and now we got cry spaces. I'm, I'm, what's next? Well, they're really wasting space by doing this. I've got a totally new <laughs> solution to this problem. If you've ever eaten at, at Poncho's, 
they have the flags. And you raise the flag when you want something to drink oh, or yeah. raise the flag when you want some, some taco meat or whatever. Hopefully they this want is to not bring. a disparaging comment about ponchos. I, no, I like ponchos. I I'm ponchos. using a good <laughs> idea from ponchos. So when you want to be in your safe space, you raise your little flag and nobody can talk to you while you got your flag raised. Nice. I think that works. It saves it saves on space and and you don't have to worry about building a closet and somebody getting trapped and in it. The safe the safe space thing kind of reminds me of the whole controversy we had with the uh, third bathroom. I mean, what if you you're know, which, yes? Okay, so yeah. which really technically we already had a third one. Okay, so <laughs> the third one being if you're handicapped or disabled right. in some way. Yeah. I was thinking the bushes outside. That was my third one. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. the universal. But, yeah. the, but it was a restroom that, that if you have these disabilities or some sort and you need special needs, mm-hmm. you go to this room. Now we're building a whole other water closet because people are confused. Sure. Which, okay. But see, <laughs> but see, you take it past that. They can't have, they can't use that one because then you're saying that they're handicapped. Well, and and how does that make them feel? So well, I don't think when I, I don't go into a restroom thinking I'm thinking I gotta take a piss yeah. exactly <laughs> I, I got I got something I, I gotta leave here yeah. I, got, I gotta wash my hands I gotta yeah. do whatever I'm yeah. not thinking about what will these people think of my gender when I walk in yeah mm-hmm. uh, no, you know I, I, I don't really fucking care well it's because you're in and get out along with the yeah. rest of us Graham come yeah. on well, well yeah, no it, it's, it, it, there you go it, 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 it's funny because it started out with family bathrooms where you can change the child's diaper yeah yeah so it had the fold down table and that's kind of where it got started and it stayed there for a while and then uh it seemed like what 2009 2010 when this transgender thing came up and and the argument's still valid because they're they're arresting people but they're not putting it on television where there's guys that are going in there that are gender confused they're dressed like women and they're actually taking pictures of boys yeah yeah urinating and i'm like there's multiple arrests in that, and they just don't make the news anymore because they don't want the bad press over it. It literally destroyed Target for a while. Yeah, I mean they lost a lot of money on that. They 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 um they they took a stance. They thought they would win business by being political, which is a shot in the head for any business nowadays. We just give you we we are also a consulting service <laughs> amongst the three of us. We'll tell you up front that's not the way to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really not. We'll Trying probably to, tell you. We'll, we'll probably tell you in a way that we're like yelling at you. Yeah, make, possibly. And probably possibly. make you. You're going to want to find your safe yeah, space, yeah. right? Or yeah, the cry closet like, might yeah. be a place to go. Yeah. Because Push-ups. the minute you start pandering to this type of stuff, it goes from the sublime to the ridiculous. Like for example, we just had Mother's Day. Mother's Day just came through, and if I didn't see one, I saw five stories about. Well, you just assumed my gender is yes, a mom. Yes. Yes. Unbelievable. And I'm like, so I'm looking for cards. So I went out looking for cards. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to read some of the cards. Uh, mommy, daddy, whoever the hell you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> happy, happy day. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's all you can happy do. Happy person day you know, to whatever you are. You know, so I was wondering, like, in Bruce Jenner's house. Or How's she, that work? How's that work? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, who do you give? He the, got give, both days. He got both days. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Schmad Day. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's see what the well has next. Let's take a look real quick. Let's see. Yeah, we jumped on Mom. Yeah, this Mother's is Day. these. These are just some crazy articles. Oh, that we've just been these are across. great. Yeah, Taco Bell meltdowns. Oh my God! I this, gotta have this, French fries. This, I just wanted some French fries. This woman is an idiot. You know what's funny though is taco bell seems to be the haven for these people because yeah. there's like five or six out there it's like a- the walmart of the fast food place <laughs> it is <laughs> there's some sort of chemical addiction that's going on in these people and well, it make them come there and i yeah. think it's affecting their brain it, it starts out with this girl going in there she looks like she's a fitness kind of gal and she's wanting an order of french fries yeah and they're trying to tell her oh, ma'am this is taco bell we don't do french fries <laughs> and she's not hearing it she's not having any of it and it turns into why are you being mean to me? Why are you picking on me? And then the crowd turns on her. Oh, it's uh, it's so it's ugly, brutal. And it's like you know, uh, and she she actually loses it and then leaves. I mean, there's there's what's well, funny because these people are starting to turn it into almost like a world star moment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Tell me no what doubt. French fry orders you have. The, Who even this, orders French fries? Like I don't even go into Burger King and say. Tell me what French fry orders you have. Right. I, well, Who says if, that? If I order a if I order a meal, 
it's kind of implied. Yeah, so I don't sure. Have to say it. When I say <laughs> yeah. number one, I'm yeah. thinking all that shit's coming. If you number one medium, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you ask me if I want a supersize, sure. Yeah, I still don't mention what's in the order. No, the only time I may I have them cut lettuce from my number four. Do you? Yeah, because I like jalapenos. I don't want all the lettuce. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, here's another one we just pulled out of the well. There's a there's a, a lady from Australia, and it's about diaper change consent. <laughs> Oh my God! Remember this? I do. Yeah. So oh, there's dear Lord. so there's a there's a purple headed wishnik looking gal that's on here, and she's an expert on family dynamics and family consent. Yeah. Well, let's. Yeah. She's an expert according to yeah, Australian Australia. rules. And so yeah, this is from <laughs> Melbourne, Australia. Looks like a unicorn took a shit on her head. She, she I've does. never seen the hair like that before. <laughs> and so she's made the rounds. She said uh, this story's been picked up by a lot of people. And so basically the premise of her story is that, well, when you when a baby has a dirty diaper, you should pause and look at the baby for consent. Pause. Yeah, to change the diaper. She said, and she actually admits yeah. the baby won't understand you. Right. Not going to understand the words, but you need to express the words. So, so it's yeah. child, ceremonial. Yes, yeah, sir. Way. And you're setting the stage, though. The child will feel like yes. you're you're, you're yeah. asking for consent even though it won't understand the words right <laughs> cuz it really really what? sorry really it's what's going on in the head is bitch change my fucking diaper my crotch itches yeah. get this thing off of me that's what i'd be thinking i, I just I, I don't know man that's that's the craziest thing i think i've ever seen that's out there and she's actually a paid professional she goes into people's homes and she teaches them. What's funny is Ben Shapiro is the one yeah. who's going through this. Yeah. So you know, if you're yeah. on the receiving end of any kind of ben deep, Shapiro di- comment. deep dive he's doing, yeah. Yeah. you're not going to come out smelling like a rose. Not on this okay? one. Well, maybe like a dirty diaper. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, literally, this is, I, I mean, it, this stuff just starts popping up. I mean, like I said, the well, the well gets all kinds of things. So I still go back to the fact, though, that we look at this stuff. Yeah. And ten years ago, we would said we'd have laughed at it and said, "No way that this could happen." Yet here we are, ten years later, and it's a reality. That's what kills me about this stuff. Right. I should have bruises on my face from face palm and some of the shit that I'm I read. Telling you. <laughs> so here's this one. Here was a big one. This happened just recently, and this actually could be its own podcast, but we'll we'll, we'll tackle it because it's in the well. So the the Boy Scouts of America has been around for many many years. I was a Boy Scout. Uh, a lot I of was my, a scout. I a was my, for a short time, but I really don't have any. I don't really give a shit one way or the other for no, the and, and I and I get it because I I fell out of it when it started getting political because um it just was one of those things that started getting a little out of hand. My teenage years are the one that drummed yeah. me right out of there because yeah. I was more interested in chicks, girls. Chicks, than, man. Fuck the scouts, man. I'm, there's <laughs> girls out there. Have y'all not seen? <laughs> so, so what? Here's the funny thing, though. So, so Boy Scouts is really there to take a, a young man and give him direction in life. You, it, it helps with your moral compass. It yeah. gives you outdoor skills, and it, it basically helps you bond with other guys yeah. in an outdoor so, it, it environment. It does a lot of that purpose driven, yeah. tr- sure. purpose driven task. How to complete sure. a task. How to see something through. Yeah, it, it teaches you a lot of things. Yeah. Well, and I think they didn't like it because it's reward and accomplishment. Sure. Because so, if you ever saw a Boy Scout that was good at it, he would have a, a sash on with, with all his merit, merit badges. badges on. Yeah. And so the idea is to go to all these camps and get merit badges in archery and and whatever it is, uh, cooking. I used to teach basket boys, weaving. That was one of them. <laughs> that was one of them. So I used to volunteer my time to teach scouts here in in this area how to cook in Dutch ovens. And I want to tell you, it was fun. It was very fulfilling for me because. You had kids from all walks of life. They were city kids, and that's why I wanted to do it. And so you had kids from India, Asia, United States. You had all kinds of people. And these kids were really engaged in it. They had a good time. They come up with some really good meals. And so I really felt like, you know, so I'm watching this happen, and I'm going, okay, you have Boy Scouts. Now you have Girl Scouts, and they do the same thing. Yeah. Except I think Girl Scouts spend more time selling cookies than they do anything else. Yeah. And so um, now, apparently, because somebody felt like it was gender discriminatory, yeah, that we need to just take scouts and just the boys out of it and call it scouts. Here's the funny thing. Girl scouts still exist. And girls and boys don't necessarily function together under the new scouts. Really? They don't. Not necessarily. 
they're just basically given the opportunity to to join. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's still there is still a divide there. Here's what's really sad is I have friends that work for this organization locally. Right. And they'll probably all be looking for jobs soon. They I they're, guess. they yeah they're catching some very harsh. The the real the really criticism. thing and I, 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 the, the real thing that's going to hurt them I think is the Mormon Church backing out of that because it was just such a huge background. Four hundred twenty five thousand people in one week. Right. Just and then done. it was done. We're, we're yeah. done. And that's that's a huge hit to your organization. Yeah. So, so so what is the what is the Mormons going to do? Are they just going to create their own organization? Yeah, pretty because, much, pretty yeah. much. When we were in church, we had so they church. got their own bicycle gang started. Yeah, yeah. It's a they, BMX team. They got the BMX going, team. They got, they, got the head, they got the head start over every other denomination on that. <laughs> oh, and they pretty much did. Yeah, because yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a Mormon organization to start no. out with. No, no, but no. they used they utilized it. Well, they, they did, and they used it correctly. They did because it's a good place to send your kid to learn service to community. It sure was. And and I felt like uh, the discipline. I mean, to be an Eagle Scout is is like is like being a. a uh, an athlete. Yeah. When eagle, when you say you're an eagle scout, that it's like being a fraternity. You've accomplished but something. I was yeah. going to say that, yeah, because the one of my remember of the of the eagle scout mm-hmm. requirements is it's it's a very. I mean, to get to that level, it's tough. You had to have achieved a lot of mm-hmm. community service. Well, you yes. see a lot of kids that are 17 and 18 that are just now getting to work on it and stuff. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, yeah. They're way up there in age. Yeah. They've really stuck with it. You sure. know what I mean? It's been a, a passion for them. I think it's a wonderful program and I, I think this is a this this has been a a victim of a of a basically a hate because it's a male dominated sure. activity. Yeah. And it's an achievement based activity based on faith and values. Which I mean that sort of tangents off our last Yeah, it, it is uh, off our yeah. last podcast with the whole masculinity thing. Is, sure. You know, not letting males or boys be boys mm-hmm. and, and, and being shaped by good role models that are trying to guide yeah. them through, you know, through their through life their skills. Youth. Yeah. Give them life skills. You know, yes, you, yeah. you do have some bad actors out there. I mean, cause everybody knows about the, the scout master that did something inappropriate with somebody. I mean, there's those people are out there and, but they're in all organizations. We just recently had, I mean, okay. So next door is this app, right? And, this That's right. message came out today that there was a teacher at a at a local school who had done something that garnered enough attention to be investigated and it was confirmed. Uh-huh. Right. So the guy, you know, guy was basically fired and um but so I mean with that you're going to have people do inappropriate things all the time. Well, yeah. I, the thing that came to my mind was Canteen Boy on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> You know, when you saw Alec Baldwin um, playing the pervy scoutmaster yeah. and Adam Sandler was the, I do, do the canteen boy. Now, remember yes, that? Yes, yeah. I you do. You know, it, it's funny because, like, so Saturday Night Live takes creative license with making fun of things like that. Yeah. Right. Yet, that same group of liberals will turn around and turn on that organization. Sure. They're actually, they're actually acting out, and I'm not going to say they're going to promote it, but they're planting the seed sure. in somebody's mind that this has happened or is something that we do, and so they they this but that is, is something that Saturday Night Live does. That's it does. Their business. That's exactly their parody is that it's a double standard in my in right. My, we used to gather to watch Saturday Night Live when it was funny. Yeah. Now it's just turned into political. Yeah, just it's mob just a, it's, yeah. A, it's another tool yeah. for them. I'll to still well, I'll watch it every one, but I I don't watch it like. Before I wouldn't watch the entire show from start to finish. Yeah. yeah. Now you know I may I may catch something while I'm walking through the through the house. I may catch a skit or something. Um, the ones that I find mostly funny are the are the uh, political ones when they're when you have some some uh, actor you know one of the comedians there that's trying to pull off. You know a they don't have figure. any good ones. They, no, all the good ones no. are gone yeah. though. I mean Will Ferrell. <clears throat> all politics aside with Will Ferrell, that guy was amazing at doing George Bush. He was the funniest George W. Bush I've Spartan, ever seen. Spartan Cheerleaders is pretty funny. It was good. Uh, Sherry you, Terry. You posted something the other day. Was it Daryl Hannah that Daryl Daryl Hannah was Daryl Bill Clinton. Hannah? Oh my God, Daryl Hannah! Can Probably pull off. the best Bill Clinton impersonation. Uh, Bill Clinton actually had Daryl Hannah on stage with him, and they were cracking up. Daryl because he would do the is, butt little lip bite with the thumbs up. Daryl you know, Hammond, 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 yeah, yeah. Hammond. Hammond. When you say Daryl Hannah, I say yeah. Bill probably did Daryl Hannah. Yeah, Daryl, yeah. <laughs> he probably yeah. did Daryl Hannah. Hammond, my faux pas. <laughs> We started down the road, and I was just going to roll with yeah. it. Yeah, you can't. Hammond, you can't do Bill until you do Bill. Yeah. 
That's the rule there. But Hammond would have the little lip bite with the thumbs up. He was, he was funny. Perfect. I mean, he was dead nuts on. Yeah, Hammond Hammond was one of the best impersonators on there. You know, everybody says Carrie, Dana, Carrie, uh, Dana Carvey was Carvey. the best. He, he was, did a good senior. He did a good Bush yeah, senior. But he, he was did. good for that period. For that period. Yeah. Because they he was doing so stuff. much better. Yes. I, I, I mean, you know, like... But it's, it's biting. I mean, like yeah. you know, when oh, yeah. Daryl Hammond. Did, I mean, it was like biting. Yeah. Like the when you're reading the the uh, when he's portraying Bill and he's reading um, the book. He's the reading book. from the book. Yeah, <laughs> and he's and he's and he's looking at it as Ken if he's Star's reading, report he, is what we're talking he's about. He's reading it as if it was like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, you know, right. Like good stuff, and then then biting the, uh, the yeah, his, his lower lip. lip. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so, this is hot. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty good. So we just reached in and pulled out another one since we're talking about schools and, uh, earlier. School to prison pipeline. So they're they're trying to correlate now that that uh, disproportionately uh, are disenfranchised minors basically are feeding the pipeline to prison. Yeah. Who came up with this? So this was pulled out of Wikipedia, but it was a group of um, so the World Prison Population List came out of the UK. And this is where a lot of this information come from. So it shows the United States leading the world. Uh, and, of course, we're number one. Russia's number two. South Africa's number three. Europe is number four. Canada's number five. Australia's number six. And Japan, I no, guess. So, and the reason yeah. why they're low is because they probably yeah. kill those people. Right. <laughs> they probably do. Yeah, seriously. In China, I can't imagine that you can get away with some of that stuff. But anyway... We don't want so, people talking about political dissidents because right. they're dead. <laughs> they just they, disappear. They're, they're just dead people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason why I, I kind of threw this up there is because they're talking about school resource officers. And do they actually... Is it like a prison guard in yeah. prison? Yeah. Okay, so just the other day, a resource officer saved a bunch of students at a school. Right. Actually, the kid walked by a gymnasium where they were practicing senior graduation, fired shots into the gymnasium, came out, and he encountered the resource officer. The resource officer shot him in the shoulder. Yep. They took the kid to the hospital. He, he lived. He lived. So he saved this resource officer. Is one of many that you don't hear about mm -hmm. that are actually in the building that stop mass shootings. That kid could have went in there and massacred that entire senior class for all we know. Right. But you don't hear about that. But that's so when I when I look at this article and I look how it's put out there and how they present it, they basically talk about disproportional tendencies of minors and young adults from disadvantaged backgrounds to become incarcerated. Because of increasingly harsh school and municipal policies. So it comes down to a socioeconomical thing. They yeah. want to say, yeah. because everybody's poor, or there's, right. this, there's this disproportionate income thing, that this is how you end up with the prison of pipeline. Sure. When you yeah. look at crimes committed in a school, you notice, though, that they happen in affluent schools. They do. It's crime is kind of takes care of itself in the inner city schools. Right, sure, <laughs> you know, it really does. That's how it did when we were kids. Yeah, most of the crime happens outside of school, but when you get into affluent schools, the crimes typically are more notable. And well, that's ones that get the that's the ones that get the media attention. Absolutely, that, you know, somebody's parent makes a phone call to local media, and then here we right. are. So yeah, so the, like I said, we uh, we all approve of resource officers in school because they save kids. We did a podcast on this a, a few few times ago, and we feel like um, this is where they're missing the boat. Is they don't um, they don't have enough resource officers to protect these kids in school. Right. But here's one we just pulled out. Uh, some schools are getting rid of analog clocks because kids can't read them. <laughs> <laughs> we are la we are laughing directly at you there if you can't read a clock. I promise we are laughing at you. So you know you know when it's time to go to bed in Michael Jackson's house. Mm. When the big hand touches the little, little hand. hand. <laughs> yeah, that's one I've heard in a long time. So you get rid of that, and you can't make that joke anymore. Yeah. Nobody will know what you're talking about. I know, right? Well, what's funny is it's so ridiculous that Dundee went to open now. Right. It, it seems like somebody rethought this one. Well, they don't know what time it is. They right. knew they were supposed to put it back up, but somebody had a, just, an analog clock, and they're like, oh, what, the, what do I do? Oh, it's funny because, now, I would say if they were talking about military time, I'd yeah. say, yeah, the average person is going to struggle with that. Yeah. Say, well, I will say that this... Flava Flav approves of this message. <laughs> <laughs> he never wore he never wore a digital clock. That dude no, always no. Uh, he was analog all yeah, the way. Analog, old school. 
What flavor. they need to do is they need to get Clock Boy to teach this. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, so you know, I guess it's true because most kids don't wear a watch anymore, right. and if they do, it's a it's an Apple. What do you call it? The Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Yeah. And I notice I've asked uh, some people that are young, and they have to look at their phone. Yeah. They don't look at a clock on the wall. You know, it's by the well, way, I fixed this clock. Up. I have right noticed it. Because well, right now, nowadays, nobody wears watches because everybody has a phone. Right. Right. So here's another one we just pulled out: cultural appropriation. Oh, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we are going to rip this one up in October. <laughs> yeah. 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 This will be a fun yeah. one. Yeah. This one is it's funny because. So apparently, if you don't like who you are, all you have to do is believe you're somebody else. Well, that's what they tell us anyway. I think that's kind of cool. They're making know? make believe fucking hard now. <laughs> they are. I know. I want to be Geronimo, but you can't. You won't let me put the headdress on. So fantasy now requires plastic surgery. <laughs> Some sort of pigmentation dye. Well, who was the famous politician thought she was an Indian? Uh, Warren? Yeah. Elizabeth oh, Warren. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Well, then you had the other lady that was in the uh, NAACP. Thought and she, she was black. Was, yeah, and she was white. Yeah. Yeah, she was white, and she had a fro with a tan and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. There was a movie that C. Thomas Hall played in, or C. Oh, Thomas Hall played yes. in. yes. And he took something to make his melatonin. Soul turn. Man. Soul Man. Soul Man. That was a <laughs> funny, funny movie. It sure was. You know, and, and so I guess that's coming to reality. Yeah. You know, I mean. But there again, something that we laughed at 10 years ago, and now people are oh, yeah. crying people, in their cry oh, closet. People would be up in arms over yeah. that if you did that now. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm i trying to find something here. Let's see. We talked about microaggression. Um, well, isn't this all microaggression to some degree? I feel microaggressed sure, on. It or, is. So, so you know, it, it's it's funny because um, when you look at microaggression, it, you can almost anybody you get more than two people together and they can come up with a cause that they're they're going to be picked on about. Sure, you know. So we we talked about the whole bullying thing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, good or bad or indifferent on how you feel about bullying. Bullying is kind of like a rite of passage. I mean, that's it, exactly it, what it I really, was thinking. It really is. So, so it's slaying the dragon, dude. There's no doubt about it. Well, you and I were talking about this last night. I, so I was studying a little bit on this, and there's a, there's a psychologist that came out, and he started talking about when you start removing people's ability to have a bias, yeah, it manifests itself somewhere else. It's by our nature. We're very tribal by sure. nature. Um, we can have the same eye color, the same hair color, and the same skin, but find a reason why we don't like some something about that person. Right. So when you start making it illegal or you start sanctioning that behavior, you're forcing that behavior to manifest itself in some other action. And they're saying that a lot of this is creating um, violent action in some people. And so anyway, I just thought it was an interesting story, yeah. I, you know, for me, because the whole microaggression thing is people throw it out there and don't even know what it is. They don't understand why they're using the term and what they're using it for. So I just, somebody wasn't fucking hugged enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 how were you hugged a lot, Sam? No, no. <laughs> Thank I pushed, God, I, I pushed that shit away. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think I think that they're trying to wrestle. That's the, the right. <laughs> there you go. Why business? I'm not going to let you wrap me up. <laughs> this can almost be its own podcast as well. Why business is committed to a social cause and. Oh yes, I know this one. You know, this is. Uh, you know, so I don't understand why a company would put itself at such risk by by picking a social like I think it goes back to whether it's good whether it's seen as good PR or bad PR it's PR our mm-hmm. names out there and we have several instances of that lately with yeah, let's just take Dicks for instance Dicks right. Sporting Goods you know crapping on the gun community whether you like guns or not doesn't matter this is just an instance that we're going to look at here why would you have a sporting goods company and then crap on a certain percentage of your customer base that you know is there? That's part of your, okay, your mission is to be in business. Yeah. And the business that you're in involve, okay, guns are a are an element or of a product, what you do. Or a product of what you sell. Right. But they're doing it for a PR reason. It's, it's hey, look at us. We're they, the new hip, cool, blah, blah, blah. They made the classic mistake, okay? So people just don't get camping gear and go camping. They go hunting and get camping gear to yeah. go out to the woods. Yeah. It, it's funny because, so Dick's was a freestanding store. It was called Dick's Sporting Goods for a long time. Yeah. And they shortened it to Dick's. And it seems <laughs> Sorry. To, yeah. <laughs> I, well, that's what happens when you shorten yeah. your dick. It's yeah. just it's the way it works. 
<laughs> and so what they did is they opened up these field and stream stores a few years ago. And so these field and stream stores were to basically separate sporting goods right. from hunting and fishing category. So you spend $65 billion on these buildings or whatever it is you spend. And then a year later, you come out and say, well, we're going to quit selling guns. Yeah. And then we're going to destroy the guns we have. And then you make all this posturing. And then now you start losing vendors. Right. So I'll tell you, you made a prediction that, that we talked about this a few weeks ago. And I, I was on one side of the fence. I'm completely flipped on the other side yeah. now. But I will I, tell you, they are going to go out of business. But here's what's going to happen. Here's a stock tip, so write it down. <laughs> so you remember Marcus Limonis, the guy that bought Gander Martin's yes. Mountain? Okay, he owns Camping World. Okay. okay. So when Gander shit the bed and had to liquidate... He bought it all. He in. bought it at a discount. I got a feeling him and Stack have already had a conversation. Yeah. Because I That's think... That's a tax scheme is what that was. I think what Limonis wants to do is become the next Bass Pro Shop. Right. That okay. makes sense. I'm not a fan of his. Yeah. I didn't read this anywhere. I'm just thinking this through to myself going, I don't know, dude. I didn't put that together. You put it together, but that's making sense in my head. Yeah, I'm thinking what's going to end up happening is Stack is going to want to like... Because, see, so his financials look better now because he's liquidated the Golf Galaxy store. Sure. So he's gotten rid of real estate and inventory there. Okay? I so, dumped I dumped product. I no longer have this asset. It's not right. costing so me money now I'm looking there. Now I'm looking good to an investor. But right. I, what I think will happen as they dwindle... Because somebody walked through their store the other day with a camera, and it was a ghost town. Right. There was nobody in it. Same thing with Gander. I remember yeah. when that happened to Gander. Sure. Well, but the because everything is online, the fact that you don't see anything and see anybody in the store right. is not really that big of a surprise. But the the even with all the the, the decisions that they've made here, you know, regarding uh, firearms, mm-hmm. you know, sure, is it's not really reflective in their stock price because. Um, like they've fallen from where they were, you know, probably like three years ago. Well, they're down twenty percent from starting from the first of the year. Uh, yeah, but I just looked at the. They're the thirty nine now, right? I looked at the chart. Now they're sitting at. I think they're right about thirty two dollars a share. Okay, they dropped from thirty nine to thirty. So, but in two thousand sixteen, they were roughly around forty ish. Yeah. yeah. So that's and then they plummeted even below thirty. They probably got close to like. Thirty dollar range. Company but, sees that as a buyback opportunity in that instance. Yeah, yes, because buy right. buy because buybacks now are a more common thing that sure I see re, that I'm so, reading. So I'm going to introduce something and see if you agree or disagree. If you have a business that you know you're struggling mm-hmm. and you want to recover it somehow, Stop kicking the you the kill ant-hunt. it. Yes, yeah, you kill it by taking a position on a social thing that you know is going to stir the ant pile. Mm-hmm. Because now, hey. You, you you basically have circumvented bankruptcy. Exactly. You you because you're liquidating. You're liquidating and now you're selling. And I'm buying my stock back that I sold at forty. Yeah. At twenty. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I got a fr- I got a free twenty bucks out of that right, deal for right, sure. Right. Because okay, so whether he did it out of his conscience or not, which I, I I just can't think of anybody that's in business being that stupid. But there's a there uh, there's a lot of things that I read here lately. You know, and, and being in you know playing with stocks and stuff that I don't understand the strategy only because i'm not in that world yeah so if i was you know i guess it would make sense if mm-hmm. you looked at it if that was what your your, your goal is is you're you're trying to figure out some way that to to work an advantage now from us you know we're com- we're looking at it from a consumer standpoint sure um you know and this is how it appears but that's a whole nother world when you start looking at the books and, it, sure and, it is and i and it's it is two different worlds and you need to look at it that way but i don't think they're foreseeing the long-term pain that they're causing for themselves no that's where i think they lose the the long because people they don't count people to be as smart as they are somebody will figure it out and then blast it this is what so and so did and people tend people tend not to forget and they'll just put it back out in front of people you know what sure. i mean oh yeah so long term it can still bite you in the ass that's what they don't realize i think no i i agree with that i think that you're looking at a new way of doing business now i mean you really are you're looking at this big risk target did it with this most recent yeah was that, target's another good yeah, example was that of that restaurant out of dallas yeah uh, Oh. On a small scale, that was in the NRA yes, convention. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. yeah. And, they put and they put a little message on their receipt. On the receipt, that, yes. Uh-huh. It, was, it was fairly nebulous and benign, and both people on both sides took it uh, both uh-huh. ways, and they just ate the restaurant up. It was right. awful. They just took a beating on social media. So what they forget, and this is this is kind of how it lulls you in. 
So when you look at social media all day long and you see stories like this all over the place, you think that everybody's talking about it, but when you, it's really not. So when it hits the mainstream, you got to remember, this is how the current president got voted in, the yeah. silent majority. They're not going to sit there and bring attention to themselves. They're going to they're going to vote with you know they're going to go out and vote. Vote with your feet. And yeah. they're going to shop. They're going to vote with their wallet. Vote with your feet. Vote with your wallet. Yeah. Right. And so they go to a business, and when somebody makes a stand like that, they just they just evaporate. They disappear, which makes it really tough for the liberal to figure out because there there's a a, a recent presidential candidate still trying to figure out why she got yeah why she got her ass handed to yeah. her. Not that the fact she's under investigation, people die around her. No, uh, it's because men hate yeah, her. Men hate her. Yeah. So what they do is they try to start putting tags of these things. Yeah. So I think it's funny. So so what we've done is we spent roughly the last 40 minutes fishing in a well. And as you can see, we've come across with some pretty ridiculous things out there. Some of them actually have some good meat to it, a lot of good traction there's to a it. Lot of, and, and there's a lot of carp there, too. So. There is, yeah. So, you know, so, so one of the things we ask, if there's something you think you want us to talk about, drop us a line. Just let us know at Whiskey and the Water Cooler what you think. And we'll definitely run it up the pole. We'll even give you credit for it. Exactly.